everyone. Welcome all to the magical circus we like to call Lady with Leon. It's your boy, the Destin Legend, Leon Rogers, 107.5 WGCI, iHeart Media Station in Chicago. And tonight, it's going down. Lady with Leon, man. This show, we're calling this show Life of a Comedian Influencer, because I got three of the baddest ones on the show with me, man. My first guest is a black woman and the youngest woman to ever win the Cleveland... Uh, Comedy Festival. Please welcome social media star Miss Jasmine Carter. Hello, Jasmine. How are you? Hey, I'm good. What's going, on? What's going on? And next, my second guest, uh, representing Texas. They do everything big down there. And I've seen this woman get out on stage before and she do her thing. She's called the Melanin Monroe of comedy, Miss Precious. <laughs> uh, what's up, Precious? Hey. <coughs> Look, I'm already tripping. Hey, thanks <laughs> for having me. Um, you know. And last but not least, all the way from the Noria, baby. You know how we do it. UNLV style. Everybody <laughs> jacking UNLV style. What you didn't know I knew about that, huh? Give it up for my man, actor, comedian, Boogie B. Montreal. What's up, Boogie B? Ooh. What's up? What's happening? Everybody jacking you. That, representative is hey, here. That used to be my, when I was in the Army, man, everybody jacking UNLV style. Why is everybody hey, jacking hey, UNLV hey, style? Hey, I used to turn up. <laughs> I ain't know what I was doing. Probably got my ass whooped in the club. Man. I ain't <laughs> hey, listen, before we get started, man, I want to give some special celebrity birthday shout outs, man. Shout out to Stevie Wonder. Birthday is on May 13th. He can see that coming. And of course, <laughs> my favorite, my favorite, my favorite MILF freak, Janet Jackson, May 16th. Janet, if you're looking, I've been married 20 years, but I Trade it all in. Just give me some. I, <laughs> the right one is, See, yeah, 20 years. 20 years, years. I trade it all in, Janet. <laughs> it's all for you. And my wife wouldn't even care because she loves you too. She, you, she might leave me for you before I leave her for you. <laughs> <laughs> also, totally. man, I got to give, give a big shout out to my man, Meek Mill and The Rock. They also celebrating birthdays in the month of May. I think that's tourist season, right? Yeah. Tourist. Yeah, shout tourist. out to my girl, uh-huh. Kim- yeah. My old girl, Kendra G, who works for me on the station, she just celebrated her birthday. She out in Jamaica smoking one. But let's get to the show. Let's kick it off. Real quick, I got a question for uh, Precious. Yeah. Uh, let's I'm start off with you, because I, I know you, you, you a turn-up queen. <clears throat> you, you, you play shy, but you a turn-up queen. <laughs> how, is cele- <laughs> how is celebrating your birthday this, go- this year going to be compared to last year because of COVID? Oh, yeah. Um, you know what, though, y'all? Actually, mine probably going to be about the same because I don't trip, like, for my birthday. I'm not, like, the big go all out, whoop the roof type. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really, I really chill. So if I do... Really? Yeah, like, for real, on my birthday, I don't, I don't have to have, like, the big, this the big night. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I don't. I don't be true. When is but your birthday? September 12th. Okay. I don't know what's... I'm not good with the signs. Virgo. Virgo, okay. okay. <laughs> Jasmine, what about you? Me? Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, my birthday in a couple of weeks. Uh, last year, didn't uh, do anything different for me. I still turned up. I'm still going to turn up. Um, <laughs> not trying social distance at all. I'm going to do right. <laughs> that I could do. It's going to be great. Now, now, Boogie, you from New Orleans. I know birthdays out there got to be special. Got hey. to be big Frida on the radio. Turn up, hey. on crazy. Hey, we ain't we ain't shutting down until the mayor uh, Latoya Cantrell come and shut it down. <laughs> she has to shut it down for us. She had to come herself to put the padlock on the bars because we was going in anyway, COVID yeah. or not. It was just go. Hey, we gonna die anyway. Yeah. He was gonna get shot, probably. A lot of them dudes was gonna get shot before they got oh my god coronavirus anyway. So they hung in there and just pushed through coronavirus, <laughs> and they went out. We drunk, we ate, we kicked it. Some people got sick, some people didn't. Whoever didn't, <laughs> just didn't. Well, I'm risking it all on my birthday. Hey, listen, I'm on CMOS, Leon. You know what CMOS is? <laughs> yeah, I think on it's C-Moss. gonna hold me through this, yeah. and I think it's yeah. gonna hold. Me. Get you a little little sea moss, a blue vervarian, chelatin. Yes, sir. Sister. I'm on all that. And if, if, if nothing less, some good bourbon. Did you be? Yes, cool. sir. Listen, what would you guys be doing? I'm gonna start with you first, Jasmine. If you weren't doing comedy, 
Um, if I wasn't comedy, low key saved my life. If I wasn't doing comedy right now, I'll probably have a degree. I will be married to a man that was cheating on me and have some kids. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. She said comedy saved my life yeah. because I would have a degree. <laughs> that a bad thing, yeah, that's a bad thing. That that is, bad. is that a bad? This is where we at, black people. She said, no. saved my life. Because I would have been smart. And I would have had beautiful. a degree. I would have been smart and beautiful. Oh, did y'all hear the rest of it? Yeah, no. I heard the rest. Yeah, the, man, the man who was cheating on you. Yeah. I just, well, so you, you think you just would have been married with a degree? Like you wouldn't have been doing another job? I think I would be extremely unhappy. With, really? With a lot of children. Right. Like maybe like two or three. I could see that. That's too much. I don't want I, that. Especially doing COVID. COVID hit too. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> walk around the house. Walk around the house in your degree. I got you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Boogie, what would you be doing? I'm going to tell you, brother. I, I I couldn't imagine my life without it. I promise you. It'll be tough. It'll be tough, man, because I'll probably be working at Popeye's or Wendy's or Rally's. <laughs> I got terrible luck with jobs, G. I got terrible luck with jobs. So I'll probably be somewhere working where I can't get a woman to save my life because I smell like a toupee. Oh, you wow. get a woman? I'm well, glad you, this came along. You can get a woman, a one that just like Cajun Sparkle. You got to put a paper <laughs> spark on your neck. Hey, <laughs> will you hey, will you tell everybody, like, that's a secret. When you go to Popeye's, you got to ask for the Cajun Sparkle. They just ain't going to give it to you. This no, is they ain't going to give it to you. It's they like in a it. safe. And Special it's like request home. magical fairy dust seasoning for chicken. Uh, I just ask for it and take it home. I got like 25 packets in the crib. We put it on everything. Eggs, <laughs> whatever. Eggs. You got to try it. Okay. I worked at Popeye's before. Yeah. I don't want to go you, back. What would you be doing? I already know. If I wasn't doing comedy, I would be a tarot reader. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, would, I would be, call me now, y'all. Shit. Oh, thanks. Oh, call me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I messed that up. I told y'all I was going to do it. You know so, what I'm saying? Wait a minute. You're going to be the lady talking about this is the card of death. You yeah. Have to, and this is I, what you have to go through. You know what I'm saying? With the card. To you know what I'm saying, you have to go through this death to be reborn again, just like what most people believe in. <laughs> now, this is kind of this is kind of stemming. So this is kind of stemming. So on the, on the question before that, Boogie, I got a sense of where you're gonna go. So I'm gonna start with Precious first. What were you doing before you got into comedy? Then before I, <laughs> I was doing um... that. Your limitations is over. It's probably. Been <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> now, depending on no, what you did, not. depending on what you did, hold on. No, really, you know what I was doing before I, before comedy out here in, in LA? I was I was working at the casino. Nice. Not nice. Was you a it dealer? Was, was you no? Was you a dealer? I was corporation. Oh, you was in the front office. You was a pit boss. No, I had the money. Y'all had sit with the money. You know, like I get the money to the dealer to pay. And then they, and then and then they really take the money. They get the money to me, cause I'm like the bank in the in the in the in the casinos out here. I'm the oh, bank. Well, you made a lot of money. Damn. I'm just sitting no. <laughs> Damn. Nah, <laughs> I didn't make no It sounds good. It should be sounding good. It should be some wood. <laughs> you got to find that out again. No. Don't Special answer. Limitation. Jasmine, Jasmine, what were you doing before you started the comedy journey? Oh, well, I kind of started comedy, not stand up specifically, but I started comedy like videos and stuff when I was 17. So mm -hmm. before that, um, I was just a regular high school kid. But kind of my life okay, thank, thanks a lot, Jasmine, for dating everybody on this panel. Appreciate you so much. Love you to death. We're all failures. Thank you. Wow. You're great. I mean, that's what I've done my whole life. Yes, like, <laughs> at 17, I was rich when y'all was out. No, I'm... no, I was poor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what were you doing before you got in the comedy game? Hey, you know what I was doing. You already know. I was at, working at a call center and selling reefer on the <laughs> side. 
I'll sell a little bit of reefer, not a whole lot, not enough to be a full fledged drug dealer. Right. But I worked at the call center with the fellas during the day, and then we kicked it. We had a good time that night in New Orleans. Let great. me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Did you ever solicit any of your callers? Like, hey, look, I'm trying to get you on this insurance, but if you don't, I got quarter ounces. <laughs> hey, listen, I had some. Hey, hey, call me on this though. I just give my real number. I was just maybe like, hey, you don't want to give out your real number? I'm like, no, nah, they want to talk to me about something else. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did what I had to do, I, and I got fired for talking. Got fired. I got fired for talking at a call center. That's, That's what made me say, you know what? I'm going and I'm try comedy. I'm gonna just try comedy because I got fired for doing what we supposed to be oh, here doing. Talking. Hilarious. My luck is Hilarious. bad with jobs, bro. That's yeah. Me. Jasmine, now let's go back to you. High school. High school, I'm having straight light issues on that. High school, you said you um, started out, it was on Vine. You were doing comedy on Vine, correct? How did you get your start? Like, what made you say, well, I'm going to start doing sketches on Vine? Um, well, I was making, like, these funny pictures on Instagram first, and then Vine came along, like, right before graduation. And I was like, oh, they done messed up now. I'm already animated. I'm going to just be on Vine animated. Now, I wasn't oh. good on Vine. I didn't get good until I was on Instagram for like a year or so. I didn't get good until I was like 19. But I, I don't know. I just did it. Just a kid with a phone. And was like, I got nothing else to do. So great. Wow. So did it affect your grades? No, I was a straight A student, honor student, AP student, secondary student. Damn, you are not laughing now. Honorary you know, <laughs> student, uh, super cool lady, cool lady. I don't uh, mention. Uh, wait a minute, oh, now. Man, that's a lie. You know what I'm saying? That's my mom. Uh, I was a quiet kid. I did my homework. I didn't do nothing. I wasn't messing with the boys. I wasn't doing nothing. I had my head in the books. Wow. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Adjust you know. your crown, queen. Look. <laughs> Look. When we come back, man, we're going to talk about views and Jasmine, how you build your uh, fan base up. And we're also going to get more with my girl Precious and my man Boogie B. We'll be right back. Later with Leon. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Later with Leon, man. I got three up and coming comedian and uh, influencers when they're doing their thing. We got Precious in the building. What's up, Precious? Representing Big Texas. What's up? What's up? Dallas, Oakland, Texas. What's up, guys? In New Orleans, my man Boogie B, and of course, Miss Jasmine Carter. Now, Jasmine, we were talking to you before we left. You said you got started at an early age, 17 in the age of Vine. Now, wow, it shows you how dope you are because Vine ain't even around no more. Is it? It's like done. Yeah. Like Instagram came in. Which who killed who's the Vine killer? Was it Instagram? Yeah, Instagram had longer videos and it just kind of killed Vine. And then um but now TikTok is, is blowing Instagram out the water. Yeah, I, I, and working in the music and the radio industry, a lot of songs that people never heard of before get made famous because oh, of TikTok. TikTok. But let's talk about how you built your fan base from Vine. Like, what was the struggle like trying to build your fan base? Because you've got videos with over a million views. How tough was that? Because the only other person I knew that had over a million views on video was Chief Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, again, I wasn't great at Vine. I don't think I found my voice as a creator or whatever you want to call me until Instagram came along. And just being myself, trying to not do things that everybody else was doing that was funny and things that, you know, people are trying to be funny. I was, I was funny and I tapped into that and just, I don't know, just talked about what I knew about and it just I just grew. No doubt. So it just organically built on its own. Just people just kept coming in as the videos got more and yeah. more. We, we also used to do like shout out for shout outs or big okay. shout out these people and then collabs with, I used to collab with a bunch of people. Like, man, the people that y'all know that got like three, five million, they used to have less followers than me. And it, it was a whole community. It was crazy. It was great. It was amazing. Precious, talk about the first time you hit the stage as a comedian. Mm. First time. <laughs> uh, you know what? The first time I was out here and um 
and it was good the first time. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. It had me thinking I was good. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh shit, I got this. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go back, do something different. You know what I'm saying? Woo woo. It was the second week that fucked me up. That's when I was trash. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt so bad. It was like worse than a heartbreak. Like I went home and balled up. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, yeah. Like, do I really even want to do this? Because I ain't said I want to do some other shit anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you at you at uh you at the comedy union with my man Michael Coyer. Yeah. Now yep. let me tell you something about Michael Coyer. This is a true story. <laughs> he was one of the people that inspired me to do comedy when I was in the military, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. He did a show at this place called Night Tracks on Cash Road. I'll never forget. Yeah. And when it said he was from Chicago, so you know I'm losing my mind going crazy. And the brother go up there and do his thing. This was right after the Venice Beach thing, and I seeing him, I like. Man, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? And all my homeboys were like, yeah, man, you should do comedy. And i never forget. Yeah. I stopped him when he got off stage. I was like, great show, man. I'm a huge fan. And I want to do what you do yeah. when I got out the arm. And he said, well, don't tell me. Just do it. And walked away from me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see him easily doing that, too. Right? But the, cool, the cool thing about Mike was, though, fast forward with five years later, I'm in the game. He see me. I tell him that story he remembered. Huh. He remembered the, the place and whatever and the time. And he was like, yeah, that's just how I felt. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Boogie, what about you? The first time you ever got on stage, man. Do you remember that? Yeah, absolutely. This was right after Katrina, Leon. Wow. I had just was the I was the evacuee to Washington, D.C. And I had been working very much job right to that. So wait, they moved you, they took you all the way from New Orleans to DC? Yes, and there was buses going everywhere where they had FEMA locations, where they had availability for people to move in and stuff. So I had no place. So I was in Houston, they was overcrowded. I went up to Dallas, they was overcrowded. So I ended up in DC. And I had always been like of the last, probably from senior high school on up, I was pretty funny. Guy just in conversation, people always say I should try comedy. But in New Orleans, comedy wasn't a thing. Like right. there was no comedy club. I never met a comedian. So there was no way I could do it. Like even if I had that type of mentality, which I did. So DC, after Katrina, I'm exposed to Washington, DC. And it's comedians, it's poets, it's you know, it's everything there, and it's a mixture of black people doing well as opposed to New Orleans, where it's 65% below the poverty line. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I Googled stand-up comedy. I was like, yeah. I wonder how you do comedy. So I typed it in on Google. This is 2006, so I don't know how to use Google that way. So I typed it in on Google, and stand-up, you can do comedy in New York. You have to bring five people, and you can do 10 minutes on stage in Manhattan. That's the first thing that came up. I said, I live in D.C. How far is this from New York? They were like, four hours. I was like, I'm about to go up there and get them five people to come in. And then I'm going to just hit some stand-up comedy right And it was just like, it was nothing. I yeah. went there and I brought somebody I was working with at the time because I transferred my job from New Orleans to D.C. So I transferred my job. I told one of the dudes, hey, man, I'm about to go do comedy. He said, where at? I said, in New York. He said, I'm coming. I got some people up there, too. I was like, all right, this is going to be my first one, too. I'm going to kill it. And I went up there in the all white crowd, all Caucasian, and I was super New Orleans, just stringing a bunch of cuss words together on stage. And I told a story, and it was full of cuss words, and the white people enjoyed it. I, they, they loved it. They were like, how long you been doing it? You're great. And it was just like Precious. That second time was nothing <laughs> of the sort. <laughs> I went back to D.C. and found local comedy. I rolled nigga out. Ooh, this hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you looked in the mirror, looked in the mirror, had a, a soul searching session. Yeah, because I was all black crowds in D.C. You know what? It was I a think little bit tougher. I think comics all have a story like that. Real talk. Like, there was a room that I bombed that three consecutive weeks in a row. I took a week off. I said, I'm gonna give it a rest. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna the smoke, smoke. Yeah, three. Three. I'm you gonna know, give it a rest. It's the it, pressure. It's the bulldog, and you be like, this room not gonna beat me. Yeah. So after yeah, week not two, real. after yeah. week two, I kind of went in with my confidence wavering. So week three just ate me up. Right. Yeah. 
yeah. week one, I was positive I could beat it week two. Week two, my confidence got shook. Then by week yeah. three, I was just yeah, done. Exactly. I was yeah. that's why I said, let me take off, regroup, pray, talk to God about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, God can fix it. Huh? Yeah, I, I got because God gonna tell me, hey, go ahead and keep that computer technician job you got. <laughs> so I, I come back week five, man. They, the place is closed. They turn it into a strip club. No! Oh. Oh. So like this, so that like that bomb is permanently on, on my wrist, like a scar on my face. Like what happened to you, <laughs> Genesis Nightclub and Harvey? <laughs> I died there three weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, right. guys, with you guys being on Instagram a lot, and, and, and Jasmine, I'm, I'm going to start with you. Um, people have a lot of strong opinions about social media, comedians, and the quick rise to fame. Does that bother you any, or, or what are your thoughts on that? What do you think when you hear people talk like, you know, when Ha Ha Davis is of the world, and, you know, the different people, just to name a few, and they'd be like, they got this instant fame. Do you, is it hating, or is it, how does it make you feel when people talk like that? Um, I know personally they're not talking about me because ain't no okay. quick to the fame because I'm still out here like everybody else. I just right. keep going and okay. offline. Um, but at first it used to bother me. It did used to bother me at first, and then it just I, th I think people have a can they comment on things they don't really know about too much. You can't you don't know how hard it is. Like if you when the pandemic hit, you watch a lot of stand up comedians try to get into this comedy online mm -hmm. world. It was it's terrible. It was awful. Yeah. It was so bad, but then that, eventually you find yourself like no one, no one ever denied the fact that social media comedy and stand up comedy are two different ball games. But also, people act like everybody's route is the same. If someone's going to have a quick rise to fame, then that's them. I've got nothing to do with you or your journey. That's just what they got going on right now. And everybody like sitting at the back of the comedy club ain't ain't what people got to do no more, unfortunately, because it's been 20, 30 years since then. It's a whole new game. We have an ability to express ourselves on and offline, and everybody should be able to do that. And if you don't like it, then, oh, well, you just don't like it because you can't do it. it just I, yeah, I swear to God, I wish I'd have caught on that wave when it first started, because I, I looked at it like it's just a new lane. How do you guys, uh, I'm going to start with you, Boogie, um, old school comedians, when you're around them, how do they treat you? How do they look at you? Is it a is it a this is my peer thing, or do they kind of look down and they nose at you a little bit? Um, old school comedians, it could go either way. It depends on who it is. I've been around some of the best, Act. Mike Epps, uh, uh, Chris Rock. It, I done been around since I live in Los Angeles now, so I I done been around a lot of very seasoned and a lot of mildly seasoned stand up <laughs> comedians, and so. Not not meaning they're not funny, but meaning no, they're I not guess, as deep as, in it as my. That was just a funny ass analogy, dog. I'm sorry, mild. <laughs> <laughs> they season, but nigga, mild. Yeah. It's almost there. You it almost went my. It ain't grandma. It ain't family. grandma. It's, it's it's white auntie trying to get to the picnic season. <laughs> <laughs> you watching so, out for your blood pressure. So I didn't got it. I didn't got it both ways. I didn't got some Mark Curry was one of the coolest comedians I've ever met. Curry, he don't look down on you, even though he is very seasoned 30 years in. He still snuck me in the 25th Def Comedy Jam uh, taping that they have, they had uh, for Netflix. He snuck me in. I ain't had no ticket. I tried to crash it. And <laughs> I couldn't get, I was stuck at the door trying to work my magic. And he came and gave, hey, take my ticket. He did some <laughs> black stuff. And yeah, he my thing out his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he let me sit at his table and everything because you had to have uh, signed seats. Cat Williams in there, Mike Epps, everybody in there. He took me in there like a real one. But then I get some comedians that do, you know, feel like you probably ain't gonna hang in there anyway. So it's no need to speak to. You. Mm. Precious, mm -hmm. what about you? Um, yeah, that's basically how it is. Same thing, you know. Some people like, you know, you would think like they. They could act like that and they don't, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Mike Gibbs. He took me, he let me open for him a few times, you know, and I always the same person every time I see him. You know what I'm saying? Like it, he always just cool, you know what I'm saying? And then you got the people that they might know you this week and the next week they don't know you. <laughs> I, I, like, wait a minute. We just did a show again. We was just on Right. Yeah. And, you know, I I've never had a problem specifically uh -oh. with 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 all with like Instagram and, and, and social media comedians because I get it as a new lane. Only right. time I've ever had a problem when I've been on shows with them 
and they they look they give you the look like because they got millions of followers you know yeah he need to go out he need to go out before us because this that and the other and then it would take a veteran to say hey i get it i get it y'all got five six million and for that first two minutes when you go out everybody gonna be like yeah yeah, yeah. it's like but if i put all of them up before y'all and y'all we we know a stand-up is sometimes you don't want smoke you don't know. i'm not gonna lie I've been on shows with people where I'd be like, let me go ahead and do some push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, first, this first 35, 40 minutes is going to be fine. Mm. And I got to bring my super A game. Yeah. So, you know, you know I, think, I think sometimes, I think it's, it has to be both ways. The respect has to be both ways. I respect the lane totally. That's something I wish I'd have thought of because the... And and being able to monetize it, that's the thing. I, I like skip the, the the million people to be able to get cash off of it and, and be sitting at home in your comfort zone. That's an amazing thing for me. All right. Now, this is for Boogie. Hold on for a second. I, real quick, when we come back from break, I want to talk to my ladies on the panel because sometimes I think y'all get done a little dirty in this game. And I want to see if y'all agree with me. All right. We'll be right back. More Lady with Leon coming up. Welcome back to Lady with Leon, man. I got three of the hottest comedian influencers on the web right now. My man, Boogie B, Precious in the building, and Miss Jasmine Carter. Ladies, I'm going to talk to you all. Now, this is a male-dominated industry. Let's just be clear about that. Do you feel like you have to go extra to prove that you're just as worthy or better than your male counterparts sometimes? Do you feel like you guys are forced to do a little extra because you're women or do you think the game is laid out pretty even for you guys as it is with men as far as getting on stage precious i'm gonna start with you first precious okay yeah i was gonna start talking to <laughs> Look, um yeah it's definitely well you definitely have to go a little harder you definitely got to show that you got something you know what i'm saying because not only do people you know not only is it male dominated but also each club have they like you know, fade five or fade, you know, whatever that they, they, they keep in rotation. You know what I'm saying? So you have to make sure <laughs> that, you know, that, you, that, that, you know, you showing that you can rock with them, you know, because this ain't construction. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to lift no heavy boxes. We just got to get up there and be funny. So, you know, I think once people see it, then they respect it. But they, I don't think that women get like this, that, you know what I'm saying? No off top. You know what I'm saying? Respect in it. And then got the nerve to be what people do stuff for nothing. Then got the nerve to be trying to get some. Yeah, well, y'all are funny, fool. Y'all funny. <laughs> no way. Yeah, we gotta be funny. That's why all the unfunny, if unfunny people, let me stop. Go ahead. Somebody here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop. I didn't cuss for nothing. I'm done. Next up. <laughs> that was Lord, that was the Lord right there. Like press you know that time. <laughs> Um, me personally, I think, um, obviously it's not equal. Like you said, it if it was equal, it wouldn't be male dominated. It would be equal. On all <laughs> I think that it's, uh, it's a lot of pressure, uh, being a woman, let alone a black woman in this industry. Um, huh. you, whew, you get looked at, there's so much more pressure, not just from like your peers, not just from the club, but from. Um, the crowd too. How many times you going on stage, precious? And after you got off, they was like, "Man, I didn't even think women were funny." Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't think women were funny. So I, I think it's it's just a lot. But also, what can't women overcome at the end of the day? So that don't really mean anything. I don't. Me going my hardest is or like half as hard as some people's best. So it's it it just is what it is. Huh. So, so I have to ask this because I think a lot of times, and I, I make a conscious effort not to do this when I host a show where I have a lot of guys on, I might have one female. And I used to be guilty of this before, and I just wasn't thinking because it wasn't the norm for me, but then I realized how crazy that sound when you're saying it. Do, don't you, do you hate it when yes. it brought up like, oh, we got a treat for y'all tonight. This is a special... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now we got some special. Well, we got some some from a somebody from a woman's point of view. He's a woman. But my, my thing is not that they just say women, they go above and beyond to low-key sexually harass you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> She's so beautiful. She give me a chance. Her boobs is, is this. She got that fatty in the bag. You like, oh right. 
Do I want to do I want to perform or file a police report? <laughs> Either. Everybody, and I think some, like people, like you said, some people don't realize that they're doing it, but it's yeah. just, it's a lot of unlearning to do. Let's just say that. Precious, now you look like the type, though, that'll come grab the mic literally after something like that is said and be like, man, you don't shut your goof ass up. <laughs> I'm about to get down out here like everybody else. <laughs> nah, for real. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just always like because, before, like I said, like Jasmine, like you were saying, I, I really didn't think about what I was saying because some yeah. of the women that I was bringing on stage, like my little sister, I'd be like, "Yo, my little sis about to come up, black woman's point of view." You know, I'm I'm getting hyped, yeah. but at the same time, this is a comic. She just about to come up and be funny. This next, yeah, comedian, and what I, I had to, to the all women shows. They always had a all women like now we got a, you know what I'm saying. We go. We doing something today. All women, because we usually <laughs> all men, and maybe a token female. But right. tonight, we we stacked up. <laughs> now, I, I just saw something. There was a comedian. I'm not gonna say their name. That was on Twitter, mad because she was seeing a bunch of men on Mother's Day shows, mm -hmm. and just one woman, like it was a Mother's Day, a couple of Mother's Day shows going on. They had like three or four guys and one woman. So I didn't understand like, what was the problem? Like, I thought it was just about being funny. I didn't know like, you know, you couldn't be on the show if you wanted a mom. Yeah, this really looked like the show. This looked like the show, like the white show where they throw in the one little black person, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the little token, yeah, we the little token, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we did it, <laughs> like, you know, even right now. Um. <laughs> What's something, Boogie, I'm going to start with you on this one. What's something that you do before you go on stage to get your mind right? For me, for me, I have to have a shot of my favorite bourbon, and I talk to my dad, who I lost like eight years ago, right? Yeah. I, I have a little session with, with my pops, man. You know what I'm saying? And then he say something crazy to me, and then I walk out on stage and go get it. What is your pregame warm-up? What do you do, like, right before you hit the stage? Oh man, I I do a little prayer every time, but at the, that last little thirty minutes before, that's when I start to just settle into my mind. Kind of, I still might be talking to people and everything, but I'll be in my head, kind of simmering myself down because I'm a high energy comedian. So I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna work up a sweat that whole time. So I try to settle myself way down, go in the bathroom real quick, say my little prayer. And just go out there and on my way to the stage, I throw my little Hail Mary, even though my grandmother Catholic. Now, I ain't Catholic, but I still throw my Hail hey, Mary. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's a proud black Roman Catholic right here. Buddy. Hey, in New Orleans, <laughs> most people are Catholic, though, most black people. So, you know, hey, I throw that and then I hit that stage and I let it out. Jasmine? Um, I do a lot of uh, convincing, uh, like, well, self-assuring. I have to talk to myself and tell me that, like, obviously, because before I used to be like, well, no one thinks you're funny. Why are you going on stage? But just to remind myself I'm here because I deserve it. I am funny. And I kind of, I used to go up there with an idea of what I was going to say. And now I don't. And I realize it takes a lot of the pressure off. I trust myself as a stand-up comedian. I trust what's going to come out of my mouth is funny. And if Something that I say isn't funny. I know I have things that I wrote that I can bounce back and pick it back up and just do that. So that's that's what I do. No music. I don't want nobody to talk to me. I'm going to stand in the back in the corner and breathe and then go up there and come out. Piggyback on that, Jasmine. Well, that, that comes with experience. That comes with this game, like learning mm -hmm. and knowing that. Because I think we are, I think I, I remember doubting the hell out of myself my first two years. Then by year four, I was like, man, whatever. You know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm out here. I could say whatever. I'm gonna do the ABCs and I'm gonna be funny. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. That that technique took me about 10 years to get down. <laughs> yeah. I, but on my 10th year, that's when I said, you know what? I'm about to just go right. say what I say and be myself on stage. I already know these jokes. I wrote them, been doing them. I'm taking the pressure off. And I'm going on there and being myself. And I just went up there and let whatever come out my mouth come out my mouth. But it took 10 years to figure out that's what creates the consistency mm. where you steadily rip, where every time you rip. Now I'm 15, so I'm just 
a, a show is a good day for me. Right. I'm ready. I want to do it. I want to talk to them, and I'm going to do it. I don't care what I got to say, what I feel. I'm going to say it. Precious, real quick before we go to break. Um, my pregame. My pregame, I'm going to smoke at least a half a blunt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. You know what I'm saying? On the way somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't. I don't drink before I get on stage. You know what I'm saying? But I do hit my little bit. You know what I'm saying? And also kind of like you, I talk to my people. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I say my little. To the ancestors. Yeah. yeah, I talk to my ancestors. Like, you know what I'm saying? My people did this. Looking over me, I'm like, we good, right? We gonna be all right, right? You straight tonight? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, because I feel good. So I mean, um, I get on in there, and then basically, I just I feel a nervous wreck until I'm on the stage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to this day, like I don't know, I can't stop it. Like you know, stomach turning, can't chill. Like I don't want to be bothered either. Like y'all, on, I can, I'm just in my head. You know what I'm saying? And um. Yeah, it is fun to jump off the cliff sometimes, but sometimes you better know where, where you're going. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know where you're going, but nah, it is. It's an experience and it's a fun journey. You know what I'm saying? To keep you humble. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate it. But you know, it's um that pre. I done been so nervous before. I done dropped them. Drop man, it's like, I, I be tripping. I done <laughs> threw, threw up before a show. Like oh. I'm tripping. Like nervous. Damn. That was a long time ago, though. That was a long time right, ago. Right. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that don't happen no more. Hey, listen, when we come back, when, when we come back, I want to talk about solidarity with women comedians. And, you know, do you guys feel like you're getting the same as your Asian and white sisters or is they doing y'all dirty? Hold that. When we come back, we're going to talk about that. Lady with Leon, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Lady with Leon. I'm your host, the Destin Legend, Leon Rogers. Make sure you follow us at Fox Soul on Instagram. Make sure you follow at Lady with Leon on Instagram as well. And of course, me, Leon Rogers, at Leon Rogers. No D in my last name, because I don't do the D. All right, listen, we got my man Boogie B on the panel, Jasmine Carter and Precious. They are up and coming and doing their thing out here in the comedy game. And they're also some great influencers on social media. Jasmine, Precious. We talked about being a female in this game, right? Now, on, 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 on that side of things, do you feel that Black female comedians get the same love and paper that your Asian and white counterparts get? And, you know, are they pushing for you all if, if you're not? Or do are they intimidated by Black female comedians? Jasmine, I'm going to start with you first because you, you're making the faces. Um, Anytime somebody make a face, they got something dope to say. Well, there's no secret that the most disrespected person on this planet is a black woman. So with that being said, that question is kind of rhetorical. So no, they're not treating us the same. It's not equal. The pay isn't the same. Um, I think when people think of, and, and I could be wrong, and of course it's not like this, like every black comedian, black female comedian isn't the same. But I think when it comes to exposure, if the black woman comedian isn't the black woman comedian that we've seen for the last 20, 30 years, then they have a much, much harder time being in on TV or being on shows sometimes. I, I don't think it's, it's fair. I think they're very much intimidated by the things we have to say. Um, and I feel like black female comedians are so much better at stand-up comedy than our non-colored folks and that's just my personal opinion i don't know i just i go by what i see in my mm. Mm. so so you say they only allow one alicia tyler one wanda sykes at a time it's never like a bunch of amy schumer's melissa for melissa uh you know, yeah uh, all at the same time who who right now who, what black female comedian right now is on the same level as tiffany haddish exactly I who is your favorite? And when you think of stand-up comedians and, and you hear people talk about stand-up comedians and then you ask somebody what's their favorite comedian, nobody ever really mentions a black female comedian. Uh -huh. ever. They don't. Not even black female comedians yeah. have the time. They don't even know who they are. That's crazy. That's great. I mean, we know one. I mean, we know one. Like, yes. Yeah, but I, I was, I'm saying, but, obviously, right. we're comedians, but I'm saying people no. who don't know comics yeah. don't know the black yeah. comedians outside of Monique's, the Samores, the Wanda Sykes, the all of those types. 
Right. Yeah. Precious? I mean, you know, <laughs> y'all know it's true. Like y'all do like y'all know Monique wasn't tripping, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> everybody was like, no, nah. you know what I'm saying? But I get it though, you know, like I promise we talked about it when it happened, it was just like just can't ask people to ride for you. You just gotta do it yourself, you know what I'm saying? Cause like that's the thing about what we do too. That's the good thing about what we do. You can do it yourself, you know what I'm saying? It ain't like you gotta be like, you gotta give me this, you know what I'm saying? Or you know, yeah, it would be nice, but it would be nice for our 40 acres in a view, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. <laughs> like, in the meantime, though, like, you can, like, name your own price. It's like the name your own price, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, you can get with it or you can't. So, I don't know, but I, I, I don't like it, you know what I'm saying? But I know, like, it is what it is. Like, I, I know I can't change the world. I just live in it. <laughs> but yeah, I it try, you know what I'm saying? Like, That's fact. But I like what y'all talking because that gives us motivation. And speaking of motivation, me and uh, some of my homies here that write, my man Jay Davis, we came up with a little skit that, you know, talks about motivation and how it can be used by everyone. Take a look. How's everybody doing today? I just want to hop on real quick and talk to y'all. Like, I know everybody got their own, going through their own hardships right now, right? Whether it be financial or physical, always remember that everything happens for a reason. And so laugh at your mistakes, right? And, and, and smile and always keep reminding yourself that everything, everything happens for a reason. Look, never forget, okay? God knows when to send you exactly what it is that you need. Every, yeah, man, get your hey, motivation. No, no, wait, come on, come on, man. I'm on your head, boy. Get your poop down. Bro, please, I'm not even you, Move around. <laughs> Nobody want to hear all that motivational stuff. Hey, listen, man, to continue on what he was saying, dig this. Always take on your challenges overcome your obstacles and at the end of the day catch a goofball lacking giving a motivational speech to take his car and his phone this looks like that iphone 12 to oh look at god won't he do it on phone them gray we out on phone them gray we out man free the guys we gone we up it's up it's up to everybody thug motivation jesus said it best <laughs> That shit was fire. Yo, so this past year, we've had a lot of civil unrest. It comes from the crazy-ass president that we had in office to George Floyd and everything. And and the entertainment industry now is pushing diversity, which me, I got kind of pissed off. I felt like, you know, you're throwing us a bone. Well, there's so much going on. Let's let's just... uh, Let's I'm just so start sorry. creating all these black, this black content for people. Now, with that being said, do are we seeing a rise in gigs as far as black comedians and white comedians, or is it just once again, as Jasmine said earlier, a select few that is getting that's getting the work and not everybody else? Like coming down on the level where you're a working comic on the road a lot. Do you see any difference in anything since that? pitching diversity so much or is it still pretty much the same things when you go on auditions and when you're out here trying to tour? Let, let, let me get that. Let me get that one, Leon. Real, real quick, and then we're going to go to break and come back and talk to Jasmine and Precious about it. Well, go ahead, real quick. Hey, let me tell you something. With the internet now, you can be white, black, whatever you want. If you get them followers up, they'll book you. It's a little different from race now, so to speak. So if you on the internet, you can build your own following. You can make your own 2 million, 3 million people come to whatever network you want them to come to at this particular point. It's really not about race like it used to be. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I'm going to give Precious and Jasmine to expound on that when we come back. More later with Leon when we come back. We're back with later with Leon. Before we left from the break, we were talking about the civil unrest in the community and how the entertainment industry was becoming diversified. And I asked the question, yeah. are black comics booking the same number of gigs as their white counterparts? Have you seen an increase in numbers of the work far as it comes to auditioning TV shows and or touring in comedy, Precious? Um, I haven't, only because currently I'm not touring right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't seen that, you know, just, you know, the... But I know it does exist, you know, but no. Um, <laughs> but like Boogie was saying, with the, you know, the online, you know, you can't build your following from there. Like, 
and really make it make it work for you. You know, everybody had their own little hive, like the beehive. You know what I'm saying? If you had your little group, and they, hey, wherever, whenever you and they sit, they coming out, they fooling with you. You know, so the I can't really expound on that good. That's why I went over the. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't know build your. I have honestly done that on my own. Like, you know, shit. You build your little following. You do some shit and really sell out with no commercials, no radio, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Just promoting your own stuff. So, what say you? What say you, Jasmine? Um, what I say <laughs> is, I haven't really. No- well, actually, I think I do notice a shift of my black counterparts looking more. But these are people who are already working, and there's no secret that when you turn on the TV, you see more black roles or whatever. But then look at look at the imagery with it. It's not just a, a black couple; it's a black and white couple, a black and Asian couple. So, um, yes, even though you can still build your own following, then they will grow. It does. It's no secret that there are races there is racism in those groups there has been plenty of times it's on tiktok where the black creators are being shadow banned for speaking out on injustices or just being simply being themselves uh jimmy fallon the, oh, a white girl a white creator went on jimmy fallon and did a dance that she didn't even create and she right right she didn't even do it i remember and, that why, they, why why would why would that be why wouldn't you find the creator or something? Racism didn't didn't exist. So racism, unfortunately, is a part of the foundation of the world, this country. So whatever it is that you do is going to have some racism in it. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't. I don't think. I. I don't think. I doubt that racism is here and prevalent. I feel like a lot of times I don't even like the fact when they go out of their way to make shows to put us on because then I feel like you're just throwing me a bone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're doing and, it because it's, it's trendy right now. And, and, and Black people are not trendy. And it's, it's right. better to be on the right side of history because what went down last summer really scared the brakes off of white people. White people was in the store talking to me. White people ain't never talked to me out here in L.A. Mm-hmm. So they want to be on the right side of history. Yeah, we'll get you your color band-aids that like y'all been asking for for the last 50 years. Y'all have the technology to do it. We'll get you your color band-aids because you right. deserve it. Oh, right. okay, we'll put a, a, a mixed couple on the Cheerio box or whatever. But like that don't, like, bro, if you just want to be on the right side of history, I don't believe that and for one second that people actually think that we deserve it. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, change the, I don't need a ba- I don't need a band-aid. Change the crime bill. Yeah, <laughs> right. 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 Hey, I don't need a band-aid, but how about free some of my guys that went to jail for just selling weed? Now they're in jail for the rest of their life. They ain't kill nobody. They just they third time they got caught with a couple of bags yeah. and they go 15 to 20 years. How about we change that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I change that. Listen, real quick before we get out of here, I'm gonna ask each one of y'all this question. I'm coming with a follow-up question, then I want y'all to tell everybody what y'all doing. Boogie, I'm gonna start with you start with you first. Who's the meanest celebrity you ever worked with or met? Ah, I hate to say this because he was nice one time when I saw him. The second time, Cat Williams was ooh. Ooh, Cat Williams. Really, ja- Jasmine. Um, everybody was really nice to me. <laughs> come on, man. Oh, Jasmine, come yeah, on. Cop like, out. Yeah. Bless us. Nobody, nobody has ever been like a jerk. Halfway a jerk. No, nobody has been physically mean to me. Have, have They have not, I swear. No shade. No shade or nothing. Oh. I swear to God, they think of me a little sis. Like they, I'm little. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Precious. Why y'all do this? Y'all so messy, bro. Y'all kind of messy. <laughs> um, you know who was who, I, and you know what? And I wanted us to be cool because you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? But Lunel, you know Lunel. Later we, you know, later on in the game, you know what I'm saying? Like you know. She got a height, you know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. to where we can at least speak and gave me a compliment. She was at a show. But, like, at first, when we worked together at this show, but she was so, like, it was ridiculous. Yeah, I let people be crazy. Jasmine, Jasmine, real quick, where can they find you? What you got coming up? Uh, you, can find, you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, Jasmine Carter underscore, underscore J-A-S-M-Y-N. I got a uh, web series coming up. Um, doing a comedy show in Inglewood coming up. Yeah. No, dunked on him. Gave him some. Boogie. And follow me on me? everything at Comedian Boogie B, man. It's very simple. I got a movie called Boosters coming out with every hot comedian in the game in it. 
Just hit the link in my bio at Comedian Boogie B. Thank you, Leon. Precious. What's up, y'all? Um, I do a um podcast every week. It's called On These H O E S. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so y'all should tune in. That's on um Apple Podcasts, every platform, and just follow me to get no. I mean, to see when I got a show at Precious Live Comedy. Where can they? Where can they? Fu- oh, at Precious Live Comedy. Hey, man, I thank all three of you all for stopping by. An hour was enough. Not enough time to talk to you all. Very funny stories. Very funny insights from the next greats in the comedy game, man. You've seen them here first, man. For everybody that was on the panel tonight, I'm Leon Rogers, my man. The Book of Sean is up next. Be sure to check me out every Monday at my new time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. In the prime time now, baby, in the Central. It's your boy, the Destiny Legend, Leon Rogers. You see something bad in these streets, it's your duty to say something. We gone. Peace.